this video I am going to demonstrate the Blonder Tongue Agile Modulator. It's uh, an AM6550 is the model number. This is an older unit that does not have a digital channel selection. I'll get into all that in a minute. I got this off eBay uh, for a relatively cheap price. I mean, really cheap. I mean, uh, the I was a fraction of what these things cost. You know, these things cost anywhere from eight hundred to like fifteen hundred dollars, depending on the options you got included with them. As you can see, I even though I have the D, my old DVD player on top, it is a rack mount unit. I put little feet on the bottom because I'm not, I don't have a rack to put it in right now. Uh, in the back, um, it has video in, which is just uh, baseband, line level, you know. Um, and uh, it, it's an F-type screw-on connector, so I just put, you know, it's, it's an F-type to um, RCA adapter. Audio is just simply a RCA adapter, um, unbalanced load. Um, and this is for if you have to, an external uh, device to hook to it has a, you have to have this little loop cable here for intermediate frequency in and intermediate frequency out otherwise this won't work and right here I have a 75 ohm to 300 ohm ballon with a UHF loop antenna on it the purpose of this would be if it was like say in a cable TV station or a a hotel or you know some local network like in a school or something and you can broadcast on cable over the different channels and you would set this RF modulator for um, a channel you want to you know take line level video and audio to convert it to a cable TV channel and broadcast it you know to multiple TVs through you know splitters and sit network you know to feed a whole building basically um, the output is uh, variable from 50 to 60 dBmV. Um, but what I'm doing with it is a little different. I mentioned this in a previous video. I have all these vintage televisions, but I really, especially on the black and white portables, and even the real small portables, would love to have actual portability. And I want to do it wirelessly. Well, the output signal is strong enough on this where you can do just that. 1976 General Electric Portacolor. I don't even have I don't even have an antenna on that TV. And all those TVs back there. I'll get into everything in a moment. I downloaded the manual off Blonder Tongue's website, but it's for their latest model. You can still buy this, but you see the newer model as digital channel selection um, but I'm just gonna open this up to the specifications and I gotta go over some things here uh, on this model here you have dip switches so you pull it out and you see um, right now it's actually set for channel 70 uh, cable television and there are your dip switches there Pull out that guide there, and that's how you set the channels. And then this little thing just slides right back in. These little push pins here. Um, that said, channel 70 translates to UHF 19 on all the TVs. And I only got uh, three TVs with actual antennas on them. The rest are just picking it up perfectly fine. And the thing is, it's broadcasting it absolutely perfectly like it was hooked to the unit itself now thing I'm gonna go over real quick is it's you know I'm broadcasting wirelessly what does the FCC have to say the FCC has a limit of you know a hundred milliwatts 0.1 or 0.1 watts well 60 DB I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom in here show the specifications and the output you see it says power level plus 60 dBmV that equates to only 13.34 milliwatts or 0.013 watts 
So it's well within the legal limit for unlicensed FCC broadcasting and the fact that nobody outside of us collectors and enthusiasts are using any um, are doing anything of analog over the air I don't think any it'll be a problem but this is why I did this uh, so I could I'm actually gonna eliminate all my distribution amps and just run every TV wirelessly from now on with only like the newer sets like late 70s to early 80s with VCRs and other stuff on it um, I'm going to turn some lights on real quick here. There's many TVs I never did videos on. This was our latest one, and it's a relic of Harley's past that we got off Craigslist for free and with original remote. It's from 1984. It's an RCA XL100 console. Nothing wrong with it. There's the Zenith I showed in the previous video. Now operating completely wirelessly. And that one I actually do, you know, I said I had a loop antenna on it. And this um, RCA here, a loop antenna on it. This was a TV from my past, too. I actually got it in a thrift store in 2005. And it, um, long story short, like I said, it was my parents' first TV. I got it at the thrift store, this one at the thrift store in 2005 and had it since. And I use it regularly. And that just shows you 10 years later, it's still chugging along nicely. Um, I used to have... The original rabbit ears and bow tie antenna that went in there that came with this TV but my dad threw it out so I didn't need it well, man if I only waited another nine years I would have had it back and I could have had the proper original antennas to this TV um, don't know where I was going with any of this but anyhow yeah every one of these TVs is wireless right now and every TV in the back row and that RCA doesn't even have an antenna on it that's how strong the signal is. Um, as for how far does it transmit, that depends on many factors. Um, one is the type of antenna on there. I just stuck a loop antenna on. Uh, the height, you know, location. Um, many other factors I haven't even sat down to calculate. But for in the house, it works just fine. But we are going to do a test to see how far it does travel. Um, again, even with this maxed out, it's still within the FCC legal limit for uh, unlicensed broadcasting, so it's no problem. Um, but anyhow, I have in something that is appropriate for 2015. And I'm purposely leaving up the on-screen display on the um, DVD player just because. And um, I'll go over some of the things on here. Output level, that's where you can vary the 50 to 60 uh, dBmV uh, output level. And there's your channel selector through the dip switches. I need to adjust the settings again. It's the mo over modulation lights blinking for the audio. And the video is slightly coming on too. I adjusted it for one source earlier, but basically you want to. Like, you turn it up to where you just light up and back off, kind of like you're adjusting for a record level. And uh, ARIO level, um, just that. Um, I really should put that right in the middle. That's probably where it would be ideal. I just adjusted to where it didn't inter interfere with the audio and video. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's all it is, is just the high-powered... Um, uh, modulator you put on any channel um, it covers um, let's see here mine's the AM 6550 that's the frequency range it covers cable TV 2 through 78 and 95 through 99 but I got it set to channel 70 from when I received it and I'm just not gonna touch it I mean I mean it'd be neat cuz um every TV I have I have a ballon hook to it, and um, on the VHF side, well, UHF will just stick an antenna on it and um, go from there. When are we? We're descending toward Hill Valley, California, at 4:29 p.m. on Wednesday, October 21st, 2015. 2015? We were in the future. 
stuff. Uh, Jennifer, um, I don't know how to tell you this, but you ran a time machine. This is the year 2015? I'm going to 2015. Those are flying cars, damn it. What? We can actually see our future. You said we were married, right? I set everything out. Let's see. Party, party, UHF 19. Wedding. See? Put on three to use down there, but UHF. The directed diet sets, I don't have the inserts for 19. I just tuned it. But I got that one set there. This one's on UHF 6, and that one's on U2, which is just the insert for it. But yeah, I'm broadcasting wirelessly, which is beautiful. One thing I'm going to show, I'm just going to keep the camera rolling. I'm going to come over here into the garage, into the work area. Uh, future video on this, I'm still working on it, and there's a vertical linearity problem, but this is my next video and future project, it is a 1969 RCA 20 inch black and white all tube television. Codex, you hooked me up with this back in like seven years ago almost, only now am I getting to it. Uh, it was dead due to a bad power switch, and um, this is another set that was fully uh, parts washed. It's spotless now. It's been on for several hours. Um, but again, ignore the vertical linearity problem. But you see, I'm over here. Little loop antenna on the back, and it's still absolutely perfect. The weather service. Perfect audio. All the tubes are strong in a set, but I gotta check out the vertical output tube. And it's not the original tube, and there's no electrolytic caps in this set, so I gotta see what the deal is why I can't get the vertical to work. Right? The tube could be bad, but it could be something else, too. What do you think? You see, it's real nice and sharp. So I can take set up any vintage television anywhere. I'm trying to eliminate wires going everywhere. Just do it wirelessly. I mean, it comes out perfectly. I have a, we have a RCA black and white portable from 1985 I'm gonna go upstairs with, but yeah, if, uh, keep in mind this is right here. Okay, I'm in the living room of the house, which is one story up and about 50 feet away from the transmitter. And it's still, perfectly clear and interference free and as you can see I can tune it for this thing doesn't fit I'm it's probably not going to show yeah. up well, out of your pants pockets but all kids in the future wear their pants UHF inside 19. out put on this cap just have the dive or monopole antenna fully down because it's UHF it doesn't need to be extended grab her feet but one of the tests we're gonna do, okay, now, I'm gonna take this portable set, which also has the car cord in the car, and just see how far it travels outside the house. All right, this is the first time that power cord's been unraveled uh, for that uh, TV for in the car. Clock but... tower. Hey kid, some a hundred bucks. Will you help save the clock tower? Sorry, no. Come on, kid. That's an important historical landmark. Look, some other time. Lightning. And I'm sitting outside the garage door. Let me see what happens when I close the door. It's Miami. Yeah, something. Who would have thought? Hundreds of one shot. I wish I could go back to the beginning of the season. Put some money on the Cubs. I just went to Miami. What did you just say? I said I wish I could go back to the beginning and of the season. Put some money on the Cubbies. A little bit of snow, but starting to pick it up. Hey, come on, come on for that. What's going on making a few bucks on the side? I got the audio. I am going to put this in the pack. Stop! So it's starting to come in a little snowy right here. We're in front of the house right here. Hilldale, age 47. 47, that's a hell of a basement. 
What the hell are they doing? Doc? Right here. And the amplifier is way over there. Uh, under, you know, below grade. With just a little loop antenna. So it ain't traveling too far to cause, so the neighbor might be able to pick it up, but that's about it. Now I'm driving down the street a little bit. Um, I'm past the house. I'm gonna see where I live. I'm gonna see myself as an old man. I'm gonna see About one block away. direction I drive, uh, a half a block to a block away from the house, and then it's kind of snowy. And considering where I'm broadcasting from, down in the basement, under the ground, if I had it upstairs, which I don't need to because that's away from the TVs, um, see, I'm, I'm, let's see, I'm two blocks away, going up to about three blocks away right now. So, yeah, this, this broadcasting in the basement does not go too far. And shouldn't be any problem. It's snowing out and everything and people are probably wondering what else is going on. It's like driving around the block at four in the morning. Then start to pick back up. No damn. So start picking up the audio about half a block away. And it doesn't start coming in. So about I'm right in front of the house, so I'm pulling the driveway here. That's right you got a little at. trank, but I think you can walk. Ma'am, you should be programmed. It's dangerous to enter without lights on. Lights on? Yes. Now look, just take it easy and you'll be fine. And be careful in the future. The future? Okay, we're sitting right here outside the garage door again, which is the window that shields all full of that. Four in the morning, 34 out. 37. Yep, yeah, that's where we stand. There's the TV. Now I'll put the garage door back up. See how it's uh, affecting that too? And the door is. Now, all the, I get married all in the, the way up. So, there you go. I gotta get out of here. So powering the TV off like this in the car. And it probably would transmit further if I had it sitting in the garage, too. Or, you know, of course, upstairs. Or even hooked to the house uh, antenna system. <laughs> and from the garage door. There it is way over there, so it's in the far corner of the basement underground, so that ain't too bad. But in the house, absolutely perfect. And of course I could always play around with different antennas, location, and everything to get to go further, but no need to. It's just for fun, I might do it someday. So there it is. Blonder Tongue model A6550. And it has none of the options installed. Uh, other options, because this this cabinet's mostly blank. Some other options include um, like a stereo. Uh, you know, to be able to broadcast in stereo. And yeah, there's option five right there. And there's the other options. 